Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Volpe Creates show on this beautiful, rainy Columbus day. Uh, I am your host, Chris Volpe. It's always joined by a baby girl who's over there sleeping, but is terrified of the storm. So she's shaking. So she make an, may, may make an appearance. Uh, and of course, uh, Mr. Lucas, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm uh, very happy that we uh, hit affiliate. So that's cool. But other than oh, yeah. that, I'm doing great. Yeah, we're we're big time now, right? Yeah, I'm making all that cash. Um <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Oh yeah, I didn't tell you yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the Volpe Create Show, the weekly talk show about video games and creative technology. I probably should have mentioned that. I'm a little frazzled this morning. A lot of GDX work uh happening, so I've been back to back. But uh we're here, we're excited, and as always, we have a special guest with us. So this week's special guest is Teal, who I have known for Seems like many years, many years. I think, were you at the first GDEX when we were at the convention center? Is that the first? It was in 2017. 2017? But I did attend okay. the year before, which was at the convention center, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, we had you uh, come and perform with your, uh, with your group, Phoenix Down. Uh, so I'm excited to have you back again this year. I kind of like threw that at you out of nowhere. I was hoping that you would... Uh, have the time to do it and it looks like you you can so um before we go too far why don't you let the folks know a little about yourself and um what you do well hello everyone um we're so excited to be coming back to gdex this year gdex was actually the first convention that we played at so it feels like home like we're coming back um my name is teal i'm the oboist of the ensemble and the executive director um, other members in the group are Dylan Lloyd, who's our clarinetist, and Jackie Ro Royce, who plays bassoon. So we've arranged tons of video game music ready uh, to play. But uh, just throwing this out there, if there's something that you specifically want to hear there, uh, go ahead and send us a message as soon as you can, and maybe we can work something out. A nice. little about the history of the ensemble. Um, we've actually been playing together since our undergrad years in 2009, so over a decade of music together. And weirdly enough, we all went to the same high school, but at different times. We all went to a performing arts high school, and we've done various competitions together, played on a lot of international stages, but our heart is really with all things nerdy music, so doing a lot of video game music and a lot of tabletop and Dungeons and Dragons music as well. So you said GDX was the first convention you guys performed at? Is that what I heard? Oh, it was. Oh, that's exciting. I don't think I knew that. Or if I did, my brain has long since deleted it. But that's exciting. I'm glad that uh, we could be a part of that, uh, part of the Phoenix Down story. Um, so I guess... Uh, the first thing I kind of want to talk about is, you know, you said you're a fan of, of nerdy things. We were talking about D&D &D a little bit uh, before we went live here. But um, what was your sort of, I guess, inspiration to start a music group for video game songs? Just something you liked? Or? So it grew out of uh, a passion for music and gaming. But uh, a big part of it was being a classical musician, you're kind of taught like you get the orchestral job or that's it. There is no various degrees of success. And my friends and I called shenanigans on that and decided that we wanted to do music our own way and play music that we were more excited about and passionate for, which is why we prioritize playing a bunch of nerdy music as often as we can. So is that your, uh, you went to school for music? Yes, uh, all three of us did. Um, I got my undergrad and grad school degrees in music. Our clarinetist is actually a fancy doctor um, of music, and our bassoonist has graduated from um, undergrad with music as well. Wow, so you got a, you got a whole uh, group of uh, music auteurs there. Um, oh, yeah. No, I... I... I remember uh, talking about the idea of of having you at, at GDEX, um, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Like, you know, we were kind of talking back and forth, 
Uh, and then when, and I, I've, I've tried to, exp the reason I'm telling the story is because, um, well, I think last year you were unavailable. And then this year, Origins, this little behind the curtains, Origins is, um, they're always a little worried that we're going to make too much noise because we're like the video game folks, you know, like they're the board game tabletop show and we're the video game show. And so they're always worried we're going to make too much noise. I was like, well, we'll be fine. I mean, we've never made too much noise, I guess. Uh, so I was like, I want to I want to bring out this um, this group that's going to play like orchestral music um, during the event. And they're like, is it going to be too loud? And I'm like, no, we'll be fine. So even if you are too loud, I don't care. I just I wanted you there because I remember when um, I was walking by at the show and I'm always during GDEX, I'm always running all over the place because I'm just doing 100 different things. But I, I remember just hearing your music as I was walking around. And I just felt like it created this really nice atmosphere. And in the convention center, like the walls seemed to like channel what you were playing, like down the hallways and stuff. So I just thought it was a really like, I don't know, just a really great way to like bring folks into this, this world. And one of the things I've always wanted to do that uh, we're just, I don't know, we haven't gotten there yet, but I would really like to create the expo show floor to look like you're walking through like a Legend of Zelda town or something, you know, like the okay. Castle Hyrule and they're like, there's the different sections. And I would like to have like music in the different sections, you know, depending on where you are. So you were kind of like my first like foray into that idea. So uh, thank you for, for doing it. Um, for this year, do you have, uh, I guess without spoilers, maybe, do you have some ideas of, of the kind of stuff you want to you wanna play? Have you been practicing anything new? You bringing out the old hits? Well, we have a, a collection of old hits, but we're always adding to it and making new arrangements. Um, our arrangements do take a little bit of time because we have to think about each particular instrument as we do them. But yeah, we're excited to unveil some new tunes this year. Um, don't want to reveal any secrets just yet. You'll have to come by and listen. Uh, how, many, how many songs do you currently have in your Ooh. repertoire right now? It's got to be close to like 200 different tunes. Wow. Really? Yeah. That so way you... we won't um, do too many repeats. So, of course, I mean, some songs are just so iconic that people want to hear them over and over again, like Super Mario. But sure. we definitely pepper that in there with some uh, more indie music, um, some stuff that maybe isn't as um, known yet but just because it needs to be played a little bit more. Are there uh, any particular games that you personally enjoy, like playing the music for? Or I guess, what kind of gamer are you? Like, what, what kind of games do you like just disregarding the music component of it? I'm definitely uh, an RPG type player. Love me some Final Fantasy, some Legend of Dragoon, that kind of stuff. Oh, I also yeah. really like the, the beat-em-ups. Recently, I've been playing River City Girls and Street Fighter 4 with my partner. Mm. And I just love to button mash. <laughs> I don't yeah. like to learn combos, but I love button mashing. Have you played uh, Hades yet? Everyone keeps telling me I'm supposed to play Hades. It's supposed to be really good. I've heard good things. I haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it's, it's on my list. I don't know why I haven't, because everyone's like, it's amazing. I was like, all right, I'll get around to it. Um, well, obviously, yeah. you need a little more on your plate. Yeah, well, I uh, I think I said this last week, but um, so I, I have this um, game club that's like a music club where every month I post a game and like, you know, imagine like a book club for games, right? And we all kind of play the same game. Uh, and so June, GDEX will be done. It's my birthday month. So Tom can stop. So I am trying to think of the game that I want to play for June. And I was kind of veering towards Elden Ring, but I don't know. Hades is always kind of pulling at me. Um, but I want to jump back to, just because I'm curious, back to Final Fantasy. Did you play FF15? No. The last one that I played was 10. So it's been a, oh, okay. a, a few years. I, don't, give a I don't have tons of time to play, yeah. but I do pull it out whenever I can. Yeah, I would recommend 15. It's an interesting one. Um, but it uh, it is... Uh, I mean, I guess it's not that long. It's an it's a RPG, but like it's not like a 200 hour monstrous experience like some of these things like persona is or mm -hmm. or whatever um so uh 
you all, you said 2009, is that, was that correct? That you've been. That since we've been playing together. Playing together. That's a, that's a long time to be, to, to be a group, uh, and consistently do it. Um, yeah. And we all still like each other. So huge bonus there. <laughs> Are, are you all in, in Columbus? Um, our bassoonist is in Louisville right now. And that's actually where we went to uh, school together. So not too far away. Meet up and play whenever we can. Yeah. Yeah, I... With 13 years, is that's that's a long time. I guess that's why you have 200 songs. So that's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. But um, so I guess what... When you started... Uh, Phoenix down. Did you have like an idea of where you wanted to go? You said you kind of wanted to do music your own way, but did you have a, a hope of somewhere that you want to go or, or you just enjoy playing? Good question. Um, part of it is just enjoying playing and wanting to bring in the people that I enjoy making music with. And part of it is exploring different creative ideas that either myself or other members of the ensemble have, uh, like playing music in unconventional places. Or um, a couple years ago, we did a project where we had a live D&D &D game going on and we inserted interactive improvisatory music. So it's really just finding ways to play with our art form in different and unexpected ways that keeps me excited and engaged. Yeah, that's really cool. The D and D thing is really that's a really cool idea. Um, we've had folks. The, the The reason I ask is because I'm always interested in. I, I love music. I've grown up with music. My dad was like a big music guy. So like, when my friends came over, my house was always the house that was playing like blues music and reggae and zydeco and just all sorts of weird music, you know. Uh, so I, I've always had like a, a song in my soul, as it were. Uh, and over the time that I've been in the industry and pumpkin, you are driving me crazy here. Uh, I don't know. She wants to play it's She wants to play fetch, but she's not bringing me the thing to play fetch. So I can't help her on this adventure. Uh, but, uh, I've met like a bunch of folks like the super guitar bros. We met them, um, yeah. the bit brigade folks and like it's a very similar story I feel with like a lot of these folks where like they, they love music and they love video games and they want to try to find a way to like merge those two. Um, mm -hmm. And the super guitar bros, I think are similar. They've been doing this over a decade as well. Slowly like cultivating a following um, actual plug. They're going to be in Columbus, I think in July, July at something. Um, but uh, I, I've always liked that because I want to, I don't know if I told you this, but um, I've, I've had this idea to bring more and more music to GDEX and eventually have like some sort of concert experience or something. Um, and we just, you know, it's just one of those things where like we just get busy and, you know, setting up a concert series is no easy task. So uh, right. if we, you know, if we do it, Pumpkin, I'm going to put you in another room if you don't stop. You're losing your mind. Um, sorry. Uh, and one of the one of the experiences I had is I went to the Columbus Anthenaeum. I don't know if you've ever been there, and I went to go see a, a concert, and uh, it's this old theater, and I, I was at the concert. I was just kind of looking around, and I was like, "This place would be awesome if it was like lined with arcade machines," and then mm -hmm. there was a band playing, you know, on stage, and I was like, "That would be a pretty cool event." At least I think so. As if it was just like an all day or weekend long concert series that also had arcade and video games in it. So that's, that's kind of where I've been done. Yeah. So it sounds all right. The, the idea passes your, your test. Oh yeah. It's, that sounds like a great time, both as like a performer and just as like an attendee coming in playing for a little bit. Um, yeah, that sounds like a good time. We could bring in like smaller groups to, uh, you know, that, give them an opportunity to, to play, you know, maybe have it be their first show, you know, at, at GDEX or whatever. Um, so that's something I've been working with the Columbus uh, Music Commission to kind of think through what that could look like. Uh, but like I said, if I do it, I want to do it well. And I, I think it would be really, I don't know. I think it'd be cool. So you seem to agree. So let's do it. Let's do it. Um, 
So you said that uh, um, you don't have a, a lot of time. I get that. We're all sort of creatures in a, in a busy world right now. So you must obviously love and have a passion for this because you keep doing it for 13 years despite not having a lot of time. But I mean, how much time does it take you to arrange like you said it takes a while. Like, what's a while to arrange a song? I guess um, it does depend on the type of song. And um, so, like, if it's a newer piece that's more, like, orchestral, where there's tons of different parts in it, that takes a lot longer to condense into just three parts. Because, sadly, as oboe, clarinet, and bassoon, we can't play two instruments at the same time. So something like that you can might... Work on it. You can get there. One day. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> That might take more like an hour or two hours, whereas take some of like the more retro tunes that maybe are only two lines or four lines. That's a much simpler process. Can turn that out within an hour. And of course, we have to play through it and make sure there's not any egregious errors. I want to work out all the kinks before we play it live. Egregious errors. I'd like, like to playing... avoid wrong notes. <laughs> yeah, you're playing a song and then all of a sudden you're playing a super mario song or something is there uh is there a song that like uh how do how do i phrase this just because you mentioned egregious errors is there a song that like you you really really like but you feel like you've never quite nailed yet like it's every time you try to do it it makes you nervous oh i can't think of one off the top of my head usually if i'm nervous about it i just don't pull it out so i'm sure it's in my stack somewhere <laughs> I just have yeah. a look. Well, we can tell we can tell everyone on here, and then they'll request it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so another thing that uh, you brought up uh, this morning that um, we haven't really talked about, but we're, why don't we talk about it now for fun? But you you have a like a session that you an idea that you proposed uh, on Facebook. So what is, what is that idea? Because uh, it sounded pretty cool. So we've done it um, at a couple of the other cons that we've played at where we host like a panel and we call it Name That Tune. And we have an easy category, medium, hard, and expert. And basically we've had two people head to head competing, uh, listening to us play a song. And then they have to tell us what the song name is, what video game it's from, and for extra credit points if they can name the composer. And it's been very successful. Uh, people really get into it. I'm always surprised how many people know so much about uh, composers of video game music. And it's just an incredible experience that maybe we can bring to GDEX. Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, think about it and talk about it more because it's fun. And I think we got a, we probably got a few slots. We can find a slot somewhere, I think, to, to put that in there if the, the day and time makes sense. Um, but uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, for our sessions, our, our speaking and workshop sessions, uh, music and sound design is always like one of the top requested uh, areas at GDEX. Like every year, it's, you know, you would think it would be, you know, game development or programming or something, uh, but it's not. It's, it's, it's generally uh, the, the two we get the most requested are music and sound design and then YouTube and like streaming. Those are always the two that people want to know about. And usually music and sound design is uh, a strong, solid number one. So I think there are a lot of folks just out there uh, where they just understand that like music, music in games in particular, I probably a lot because, you know, you start playing as kids, they, they become such a foundational part of your life. Like I'm constantly whistling you know, songs from games and stuff or whatever, just as I'm tooling around the house doing whatever, um, mm -hmm. because those things are just, you know, they just bore into your, your brain when you're a kid. Um, particularly, I think, uh, with the like retro tunes, just because um, a lot of them had to be kind of, I hate to say simple, but like you had to kind of create the melody and the hook using a very limited amount of resources Right. In, in the 8-bit and 16-bit days. So um, I think that drove a lot of things. But, you know, we've had Grant Kirkhope on, 
who was the composer for Banjo Kazooie and a lot of those old rare games. Um, and people are always just interested in in music. So I, I'd be curious. Um, I mean, how long how long have you been playing games? I don't I don't want to you know age you or whatever, but uh, I have to do some quick math. I'd say probably about 15 years on and off. I definitely started playing as a kid. Um, playing Tom and Jerry uh, on my PlayStation 1 was one of my earliest games. So maybe nice. not like the best start, but definitely like something really fun. And hey, if my, you liked it. And my partner is also a gamer. So sometimes I just sit back and watch him game. Um, He's definitely more into like the tactical style game stuff that requires a lot more skill than I have. <laughs> but oh, yeah. yeah, like you said, music has such a, a strong way of like taking you back to a place and a time in your life and like just really connecting that nostalgia. Sometimes when we're playing a tune with the trio, especially if it's like the retro stuff, Somebody will like stop us and talk to us about how, you know, back when they were a kid, it reminds them of being stuck on that one board for hours and you can't turn off the system because it didn't have a save at that point. And you know, it's just a, a really powerful mechanism that pairs so well with video games. Yeah, music just has this, this crazy, uh, crazy. I, I think I might have told the story uh, a couple weeks ago, but um how just music like infiltrates your brain unconsciously. And uh, I do this thing called bad movie night and, and we watch uh, bad movies and it's just like, it's, we've been doing it for, I don't know, 15 years or something. Um, but pe people come over and we watch movies and we were watching this, this one movie um, that I, I forget what it's called now. It's like sorority girls in the Bolarama or something. And it's towards the end of the movie. And one of the characters says something. And I was like, like, like a bolt of lightning, my brain was like, I'm like, I have heard that line before. And I thought like, maybe I had one too many margaritas or something. And so I started Googling it and I'm like, no, that, that line, it was like a three word line that this woman says was used in a song for a band I used to listen to when I was in high school. And I must've just heard it enough that it formed a groove in my brain so that when I heard the actual where the sample came from, uh, my brain sort of hit a you know familiarity thing. Um, and I just thought that was a I thought that was amazing because I, I I feel that way about music. And also, I think it's really um, I saw the I'm rambling here, but the Uncharted movie, I saw the Uncharted movie and the beginning had one of those, you know, when you watch the Marvel movies and they always start with like they're showing like the logo and it's like flipping through all the different Marvel superheroes and stuff. And it's kind of like this, look at the history of Marvel thing. Well, Sony kind of like stole that idea and is using it on some of their films that they make that are gaming related. And I was watching it go down and I was like, I bet that I'm the only one in this theater or at least one of few that's able to name almost every one of those characters that is on the screen. You know, because most of the people are just, ah, I want to go watch the Uncharted movie. They don't know much about video games. The reason I'm saying this is because I think it's cool that video games have just like permeated the social world so much that now not only is there movies, but I mean, there's the Final Fantasy concert, like all those different concerts are now doing tours around the world which is the Legend of Zelda one um, I missed, unfortunately, when it came to Columbus. I really wanted to go to that one. Uh, but I think, it's, I think it's really cool to see uh, gaming, the, how to phrase it, the other parts of the medium kind of out there and like being respected and loved in like a major way. Does that make sense? Do yeah, like it's a, definitely uh, been a journey because... I mean, I remember years ago, you wouldn't see concerts like that coming around. And definitely oh, yeah, there, there's been that exploration of bringing what was considered, you know, nerdy um, types of music or film or comedy into the mainstream. And it's been so wonderful to not only see that, but take part of it as well. Yeah. Um, pumpkin, I swear to God. She stole Your my cat just wants to be on the stream, too. Yeah, she's she was on my lap, just nice and comfortable. And then she saw the uh, cover of the, for the mic and she just 
had to have it. Now she's like staring at it like anyway. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think I think it's cool. And the 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 crazy thing is, um, and this is part of why I I don't know why I didn't think but I missed the Legend of Zelda one is because these tickets sold out like in a half an hour or something, you know, mm-hmm. like there's such a drive to go see these things that uh, it, it took me by surprise because I wasn't able to get to uh, the thing so that's another thing that i i would have loved to bring to to gdex is one of those roaming concerts like the, there's the final fantasy one that's been going around um mm-hmm. this year um so is there any one of those you would love to see if i was to bring one out i mean i love the final fantasy one i've definitely been to that one i've um oh been you've to been to it one yeah was um, it great phenomenal I will say there is something like those are very specific, which is also like fantastic. But there's also ones that are a little more general where they play um, music from different games like video games live. And Mm -hmm. that is nice just to hit a couple different games. But I wouldn't be mad at any of them. I'd go to I'd go to any of those concerts. If we brought one to GDX, because that's just who I am. Yeah, I I've seen the Final Fantasy one at packs uh and that was really cool i'd like to bring that back uh or well i'd like to bring it to gdex um and then uh yeah the uh bit brigade people i don't know if you know what they do but they Fans. play a game so for those who don't know they'll play an nes game uh generally it's something like metroid that can be beaten in like you know an hour or whatever and so somebody's on the stage doing a speed run of it and then the band is playing the music of the game or the areas that he happens to be in. So it's 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 this sort of like communal effort between musicians and the speedrunner uh that are trying to do it. And when I saw that, I just yeah. I just thought it was great. It, it was just this wonderful little dichotomy. And every so often the speedrunner will like mess up or die or something. Uh and then they have to like do the death music and, and whatnot. Um but uh, people are just yeah super creative with all of these these things in the music space. So uh, I guess kind of back to my question from a few minutes ago, like if you could do this full time as a gig, would you do it? If it paid obviously enough to do it full time, oh, absolutely. If I could survive off of just doing this, I would go to every con I could, play all the music. Uh, it's definitely a huge passion of mine and the ensembles. So other cons hit us up. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of a lot of travel, but that that could be fun. Um, maybe you get a, a trip out to Tokyo or something someday for Tokyo Games Con. Well, that's part uh, of what I love about conventions so much is you meet so many different types of people and different creatives that you wouldn't normally in day to day life. It's such a a community that really like pulls together and it's really wonderful to see and be part of. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, uh, so I teach and I tell my students this all the time, like go to conventions, go to expos. I mean, I teach at Columbus state. So it's like going to GDAX is like driving down the street, you know, I'm like, go because you never know who you're going to see. And I always joke that, you know, you don't see a lot of folks from PlayStation walking down the streets of Columbus and you need to go out there and yeah, you never know who you're going to bump into. And I think in general, uh, the video game, both the video game industry and the video game community tend to be very welcoming and, you know, people like answering questions, they'll connect you with their friends or folks, you know, if if you need to. So it's like, it's networking. Mm -hmm. All right. Let her keep that, I guess. Uh, it's networking, but it doesn't feel like the businessy kind of networking because it's it's just people who like this thing. You know, when I go to PAX or GDC, uh, uh, I, I tell this like you know my, my like ex wife who, um, she she sort of gained an appreciation for video games by being around me, but she never played games and like and whatever. But you know, she she liked you know me uh the the witcher 3 i'd play that and she's like she's like i like the cross-dressing elf is like can you can he make you more outfits i was like probably i don't know 
I'll go make an outfit, I guess. Uh, but when you go to those shows, it's nice that you like don't have to explain anything to someone, right? Like if you're just like around, I, I go to a lot of entrepreneur events, or at least I did before COVID. Um, most of the people that I've talked to there have a very rudimentary understanding of video games. So like if I make some reference, like probably 95% of the references that I've made to you today, yeah, it would just be like completely over their head. So it's nice when you're around uh, folks who just sort of inherently get it and they're excited to just be a part of the conversation. Uh, and I think, like you said earlier, it feels like they're more authentic connections rather than just like business transactions. It's really meeting potential friends and collaborators. Totally, totally. I, th I think that's the key to good networking is that you shouldn't be like you shouldn't be connecting to folks to get them like in your contact list like make a relationship with these folks um i mean that's how gdex exists because i happen to have a huge list of people that i know and know me and a lot of them like even on this show sometimes like if somebody uh gets sick or we have to like move a thing i call up one of my friends or like can you be on my show and they're like all right i'm there you know, and that's not because like I went to a networking session and got their business card. It's because I've known them for years and I cultivate or I, you know, text them every so often to see how they're doing. Uh, or, you know, PAX and GDEX are times where you can go and see these people that you're not really going to see because they live all over the world. We've got uh, international people coming in this year from outside the country. Uh, particularly our game jam i think we've got i, want, I think it was like Sw switzerland i can't remember it's like four or five countries wow. took part in our um game jam this year so uh yeah and in particular like the on the music side of things there's a lot of different meetup groups when you go to those those kind of shows um so do you go to like have you been to pax before no, I haven't. Um, and it's not because I don't want to go. It's because like right when we were about to that point where we wanted to go is like when COVID hit and everything like shut down. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely on our list for the future. Um, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah, PAX is a lot. Of, I go to PAX East, the one out in Boston. Uh, and I think that's a lot of fun. Um, and I know they're always because they try to do a, a concert thing. Uh, I think it's like the Saturday of the show or whatever. So maybe you could, uh, maybe you could get in there someday, play in yeah. front of, yeah, there's, there's usually like there's a couple thousand people in the audience. So it's a pretty big, yeah. uh, pr pretty big show. Um, so one of the things, years oh, ago, was, oh, sorry, I was at no, Gen no, a couple years ago and that was like mind blowing just how many people there are. So mm -hmm. definitely want to try to, go to all the, the larger conventions, even if just as an attendee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there's something nice, like for me, I'm sort of an introverted heart. So like, I like to go to, I'll go to PAX, you know, and then uh, occasionally I'll do GDC. And that usually hits my itch for like the super large conventions uh, mm -hmm. because I just don't, I don't need to be around 80,000 other people, you know, every month. Uh, Plus, you know, you always get sick, you get the con crud and whatnot. Um, but they're definitely worth worth going to. Uh, and I, I think you like you said, you can just meet a lot of a lot of great people, excuse me, that uh share your interest and, and share your passion. Um Yeah, I mean I'm I still forgot. friends and talk with some people that I met at GDEX back when we played back in twenty seventeen. So oh, you nice. never know. Well, hopefully uh, that is Mimic, because this is going to be a much larger show than the 2017 one, for sure, uh, even with the COVID numbers. Um, so we're, we're probably going to end up like lower than we would be otherwise, but I think it's still going to be a, a strong audience, um, particularly with it being in summer this year. So we're, we're trying a, a new thing. But no, that, that's, that's awesome um, that... Uh, you're still keeping those those connections alive. If uh, bef before I forget, if somebody wants to like put a suggestion in for a song, how do they do that? Do they email you or just 
swing by and give you a suggestion? Well, leading up to the con, if you want us to arrange something that maybe we don't already have, send a message on Facebook or Instagram to Phoenix Down RPG. And while you're at it, why not follow us so you can make sure that you catch us at the con. Um, and then at the convention, we'll be taking uh, general suggestions. We'll have different categories set up and maybe your tune will be in those categories. Nice. Yeah, uh, when we had the Super Guitar Bros come, uh, I think it was 2016. I want to say, I I was like, hey, can you do a can you do a Chrono Trigger song? And it happened to make it in the set list. So you never know if you ask. Sometimes yeah. things happen. Lucas, I know we have a couple Chrono Trigger songs. So oh, okay. Well, I'll keep I'll keep my my ear out for it. I'm sure as soon as you play it, it'll probably like speak to me through the ether. You'll um, know. Yeah, Lucas, you have a song you want him to play. Oh, I can't hear you at all, man. Yeah, sorry, there you go. <laughs> anything from, like, <laughs> I really love Destiny and Halo music. Anything from that just would blow my mind. Oh, uh, what, Marty O'Doyle? Was that... Well, I know we don't have Destiny or Halo, so I'll have to get cracking on that. Oh. Uh-oh. I think chance. there was a big thing, big thing, with, this is a totally off thing, but there was a big thing with him, like, last week. I think he left uh, Twitter made like a post and I was like, I'm done with Twitter. I'm like, okay, see you later. <laughs> All right, Lucas. Well, I think you're gonna have to think of another one here uh, at some point, just in case have a good, uh, a good backup. Cause since the show's uh, what a week and a half away, that's not a lot of time to cram for a new song, particularly those True. two songs are pretty <laughs> complex. Uh, I think orchestrally, right? I have a feeling turning halo into uh, a trio is probably going to be, a little bit of a challenge. You just show up with the Halo like guitar riff from Halo Two, and you're good to go. So, or Halo Three or Two, it's one of the two. <laughs> well, I'll learn just, just the riff, and I'll have it ready. <laughs> Perfect. I bet if you just learn the riff for Halo, you could even play that like twenty or thirty second segment, and people would be, they'd be into it. Um, pumpkin stop. This has been like, we, we lucked out. We got through, what, Lucas? We got through like five or six episodes without Pumpkin driving me crazy. Yeah, uh, no, we did. We were on our, we, good. I was going to say, we've definitely been through a few without uh, either Pumpkin or Baby causing too much uh, problems, but I think it's always. We were overdue. Right <laughs> yeah, we were overdue, I suppose. Uh, so uh, you're going to be at the show mm -hmm. and doing music in, um, the, the atrium corridors, whatever we want to call it. And then, ah, oh, uh, if we did the name that tune, uh, which days work better for you? Um, probably the Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. See what I can do, because I, I like this idea. I think it's, it's fun. I wish, uh, maybe we got... Let me see. We might have enough time. Maybe I can get like a little prize or something for winners. Or worst comes to worst, we'll just get like a bag of Tootsie Rolls. I don't know. I mean, there. I would always go for free candy or free food. So that's a an easy one. Yeah, I I always like uh, like because we do like the Mario Kart tournament. Uh, we do the Smash tournament, which has like a actual cash prize pool but then we do the mario kart tournament and then we do a lot of the other tournaments i always like there to be like little little prizes or little takeaways um we might do you ever done uh, beat saber speaking of music and video games have you ever played that not, but i've seen video of other people playing beat saber it looks so much fun well we are gonna have it at gdex uh at least as far as we are planning, we are going to have it. So it'll be uh, in the GDEX Underworld section. So you should check it out because that's definitely, um, I think it's like the new, uh, what do you call it, rock band? Like the new rock band kind of thing because we haven't seen a rock band or guitar here really. Yeah, in a long time. And so I think VR kind of became that, uh, Beat Saber VR became that thing where people grooved on, on music. Because, um, yeah, we haven't seen a... When I was going in college, uh, so I graduated in 2005 for my undergrad, but yeah, th that like middle to end part of the 2000s, like everything was like rock band and guitar hero. They were huge. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and then they just sort of faded away and we never I mean heard. I, I still know they still make them but... dance pads from Dance Dance Revolution sometimes I like to break them out go super oh, old really? yeah that's that's awesome uh, we went to um Dave and Buster's once and there was this guy there who like I it blew my mind. Like he didn't look like, and I, you know, I'm obviously painting with a broad brush, but he didn't look like somebody who was going to be like in it to win it. But he showed up, he had like a towel to dry himself off. And he did uh dance dance revolution all night long and just like destroyed that game. It was, it oh, was wow. a thing to be- thing to behold. Um, but ow, pumpkin stuff. So we're getting a little tight on time here. Uh, one of the things I always uh, like to, mentioned and you've already mentioned it's the um how the best to contact you it sounds like uh, social media um is the best way to people get a hold of you if they yeah, want to just look us up at phoenix down rpg we're on facebook and instagram and usually one of us replies really quickly so if you have interest in any songs getting arranged potentially before the con or you want to keep an update on our page to see when and where we're playing during GDEX, definitely follow us or send us a message. Keep in touch. Keep in touch, yeah. Uh, and so one of the, the last question, or not the last question, but one of the last, I was kind of curious about, have you ever had any like issues with um, like copyright or anything where anyone's told you you can't play a song? Well, playing it live, not so much. Um, when we record and put stuff on like social media or YouTube, there definitely does become like that copyright issue. So it it can be a little tricky in the, in the medias. In the medias. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a group that every year they hit us up because they, uh, they do the licensing for like all these artists. And they're like, if you're going to be at an expo and, you know, playing music, you need to have the license for it. And I was like, Oh no, I'm good. You know, we're not we're not really playing any music um but you all came up as we were kind of discussing it and we're like do we need to get a license for that music and i was like i don't think ascap like the big company i I doubt they have any of the songs you're gonna play under license but regardless like it is it's a performance you know i think it's a creative take on because like you said you're constructing like you're using the song as a base and then constructing your own version yeah. on it um so i think that that sort of flies uh we within definitely it. add like our own classical flair to the video game tunes that we play mm-hmm. have you ever made any albums any albums to pimp? Um, not with the video game music but with our tabletop dungeons and dragons music we do have three albums out there right now of that music oh, awesome. and we're planning to record more for that soon how, is there a way people can buy it or is it on Spotify or how do people get it? Yeah. Um, just check out Phoenix down RPG on Bandcamp, and that's where our D and D music resides. Some pretty cool stuff. If I may say so myself, uh, it actually kind of developed out of a kind of like very friendly competition that was going on on social media where people were encouraged to write like, 30 seconds to a minute of video game music per day for a month. And so I started doing it. I'd never composed a lick in my life before then. And at the time I was being a DM for some of my friends from all over different states. And we kind of just said, hey, why don't we combine this like video game-esque music with something that we love, D&D. So it's just cross collaborations again. And it's a lot of fun. Making a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> I I like weird. I think weird is good. Um, no, I I I'm curious. We'll put we'll put the uh, the link you just mentioned, the Bandcamp link. We'll put it in the show notes in case anybody's uh, when we post this to YouTube. In case anybody's uh, curious, let me make a quick note of that. Um, awesome. Well, I think we're about out of time. Is there anything else that you'd like to let people know about or talk about before we? Uh, end our time together. Really just that we're super excited to be coming back to GDEX and we hope that you all will be there and join us for some amazing music and gaming. 
Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to have you too. I'm really looking forward to um we're, we're, we'll we'll talk offline some details and figure out the best place for you and everything, but uh I I think this is going to be a really fun year. Uh and I think people are going to enjoy the extra extra little bit of flair as you say for the event. So, thank you and and thank your team for so. being a part of it. I What's know that? it's going to be a great year. It's going to be fantastic. I know. I'm always I always say that like every year I'm always like I think it's going to be a good year, but it's mostly cuz like I'm like trying to outrun a train most of the time when I'm just putting this stuff together, you know? But like we've we've always had a good year, you know. Uh what's I'm totally blanking the uh, the Wizard of Oz, like the man behind the curtain, like don't look behind the curtain. Everything yeah. back there is on fire, but as long as you stay over here, the show looks great, you know? Um but it's something I've told my team because I, I was in art school and you do all these constructive critiques when you're in art school, right? And I always found it interesting, the people that would, they'd stand up there and they would talk about their, their work, but like mostly what they would say is all the things they wish it could be or like all the things they didn't get to do with it. And I'm like, why? Nobody knows what you planned to do. Right. So like, don't, don't tell people all the ways that you failed to do the thing you were trying to do. Cause most of the time people, people groove on it, you know, like we never get all of the stuff we want to do at GDAX. Like we just never, the same with game development. Like a game is never a hundred percent what the developers wanted it to be, but you know, they get it there. Um, so I'm glad you're excited. I'm glad that, uh, you can, you can rally, uh, the troops and the excitement. Um, that's part that's part of Lucas's job too is to to keep rallying the troops while I'm trying to not take a nap. <laughs> but uh awesome. Well, thank you again, Teal, for being on the show. Uh we're super excited to have you at GDEX. Uh and uh we'll put the links to uh all the places that people can find you in the uh descriptions. Um so on behalf of myself, uh Pumpkin, who is here, baby who's over there, Mr. Lucas. I can't hear you still, but sounds oh, good. Awesome. <laughs> uh, and Teal, our special guest, I want to thank everybody for watching um, another episode of the Volpe Creates show. I think we're on episode 19. I should know this, right? I think we're on 19. We're pretty um, far into it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so we've been, we've been chunking along. We are uh, here every Friday at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And so next week, we're going to have a show. And then the week after is GDEX. So Lucas and I are talking behind the scenes on what a cool live uh, Volby Create show could be. So we're, we're going to think about that. If you have any suggestions, feel free to, to tweet at Volby Creates uh, and we'll uh, keep an eye on it. But uh, other than that, thank you all for watching and we will see you next week. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>